Hi, my name is Tara Cordy Simpson, and welcome to the Biology 12 video lesson on proteins in Unit C. So the key idea that we want to remember about proteins is that they demonstrate structure as well as function at a molecular level. So a molecular level refers to within the cell at a very basic level. We're going to talk about structure and function later in relation to organs and organ systems. But remember, we're still at the beginning of the course and we're still just focusing on those tiny, tiny ingredients that make up all the reactions, chemical reactions that occur in the body. And proteins are one of those main things. So a little bit of vocabulary before we get started, just to make sure everyone's on the same page. Amino acid is a monomer of protein, so the smallest building block or subunit. A peptide bond is a covalent bond that joins two amino acids together, and peptide bonds are formed through dehydration synthesis reactions, so taking out that H2O molecule. So when you actually do a peptide bond between two amino acids, then what you begin to form is a polypeptide. A polypeptide is a chain of amino acids joined by peptide bonds. And finally, protein structure has four levels that we're gonna be discussing today. Okay, let's get started. So this is the fourth biomolecule that we are learning about within unit C, proteins. Now, proteins don't have just one function, they actually have multiple functions, which we're gonna discuss in the next uh, slide. But what you see right here is actually a hemoglobin uh, protein uh, that is used in the red blood cell to carry oxygen from the lungs all the way to the cell. Next, the monomer of proteins is the amino acid. And proteins are made up of carbon, hydrogen, oxygen, and nitrogen, the elements. Now, an eyeball hint, how do we recognize an amino acid when we're looking at a page of biomolecules? One of the key things you wanna look for is this nitrogen group right here. That's going to clue you in that you are looking at a protein. So remember that as your eyeball hint that's going to help you remember what an amino acid is. The other thing that you may also want to look for is this here is an R group. And I'll talk more about that later, but that will also help you recognize amino acids. Okay, protein functions. There are, I think, thousands and thousands of proteins in the human body, and therefore there are hundreds and hundreds of functions. So some functional examples of proteins um, are messenger hormones, which carry messages from one part of the body to another part of the body to activate something. Hemoglobin, which we just discussed, transports oxygen in the blood. Now looking at some structural um, examples of functions, uh, keratin makes up the hair, so hair just like this, as well as our nails, and collagen supports ligaments, tendons, and skin. So sometimes when um, people age, they talk about the collagen breaking down in the skin, and the skin is not as tight as it is when it's younger, and the skin kind of gets a bit softer and sags a little bit, and that's because the collagen is uh, not supporting um, the skin quite as well as it used to. Now, in order for protein to actually be carry, carry out its functions, the protein actually has to be able to hold a certain shape. Now, denaturation, what happens when that occurs? When proteins are exposed to extreme changes in pH and temperature, then the, the protein structure undergoes a change in shape. 
it denatures. That is not reversible. Hence, once the shape has changed of the protein, the protein can no longer carry out its function or its job or role in the body. So let's put an example to that. Let's think about hemoglobin for a minute, and its function is to transport oxygen in the blood. Well, we know in the blood that there are buffers there to help keep the blood at a certain pH level. And the reason that's so important is because if the blood does not remain within a certain pH level, then the hemoglobin will begin to denature. And once the hemoglobin denatures or changes shape, then it can no longer carry the oxygen from the lungs to the cells. And the cells need that oxygen for the mitochondria to create energy within the cell. Everything is tied together in the human body. Okay, let's continue on. Okay, the basic building block of protein is the amino acid. Uh, let's take a really close look at the amino acid structure here and break it down. So the amine group is right here, and you are going to be able to need to recognize this. So it's the nitrogen and two hydrogens. Then we have our carbon group right in the middle, so that's joining up with a hydrogen, a nitrogen, and it's also joining up with another carbon over here, and this here is called the acidic group. Okay. Um, another name for it would be carboxyl. And down here at the bottom, this here is the R group. Now the R groups of each amino acid are different. And that's how each amino acid is different. So here, some amino acids will just have one hydrogen bonded to the carbon. Some amino acids will have a carbon and two hydrogens bonded or maybe even some oxygens and more hydrogens attached. So this R group here can change depending on which amino acid that we're looking at. So let's try and draw an amino acid over here quickly just to really cement it in our minds. Let's start with the middle carbon and it's got four arms, just as we know four carbon likes to grab four extra electrons. Over here we've got our amine group with the nitrogen. On this side, we've got our acidic or carboxyl group, group, and there's a carbon double bonded to the oxygen, and that's going to form another oxygen hydrogen down here. Up here, the carbon just grabs onto a hydrogen, and this down here is the R group. Okay, I'm not actually going to attach a carbon there because it can be any variety of things. Now, an important thing to remember is the amine group can be over here, the carboxyl group or acidic group can be over on that side, the R group and the hydrogen can be flipped from this side to that side. So when you're trying to recognize an amino acid, remember that all these different groups can be in different places around the carbon atom, the carbon atom. Okay, on to making a peptide bond. So a peptide bond is formed by a dehydration synthesis reaction. So you lose a water molecule. So let's take a look at this. Here we've got an amino acid. So we've got our carbon, our central carbon atom, that's joined to its R group down here. And here it's joined to the nitrogen. And over here is the other carbon that's double bonded to the oxygen and the OH here. And again, we've got the same amino acid right over here. We've got the central carbon joined to the nitrogen, joined to the R group, joined to another carbon, which double bonds to the oxygen and then the OH. So this here is another amino acid. So when these amino acids undergo dehydration synthesis, and they lose a water molecule, then they're going to form 
a dipeptide by forming a peptide bond. And you can see that what happens is the peptide bond forms uh, right here. So, um, or yeah, right here. Okay, so this here is our peptide bond area where the two amino acids are coming together. So an amino acid plus an amino acid forms a dipeptide. When you have three or more amino acids, then it forms a polypeptide. Now we're gonna move on to protein structure. Protein structure has four separate levels, and we're gonna learn about how the cell creates a protein, a polymer, from amino acids, monomers. So we are familiar with the amino acid structure here now. And we are going to learn how we take a whole bunch of these amino acids and create a protein. And the example here is hemoglobin. So we're gonna begin with the protein structure primary level. Okay, with the primary level protein structure, it's basically a sequence of a chain of amino acids. So basically it's a long chain of amino acids which forms a polypeptide. So this here is our linear polypeptide. And it's important to remember that the primary level is linear. When we move on to the secondary level for protein structure, that can come in two forms. It can come in the form of a pleated sheet, as you can see here, or it can actually form an alpha helix. Now, why does this secondary protein structure occur? It occurs due to the hydrogen bonding between the amino acids. Um, and it either forms, as I said, the alpha helix or the pleated sheet. Here, this is a larger diagram of the pleated sheet, and you can see the different uh, reactions here of the hydrogen bonding occurring trying to hold that alpha helix together. Next, we're going to talk about the tertiary level. So the helix or pleated sheet fold over on themselves, which then forms the tertiary level of the protein structure. The tertiary level actually forms the 3D shape of the protein, and it's held together by various bonding between the R groups. So there's covalent bonds, ionic bonds, hydrogen bonds. The other thing that comes into play is the hydrophobic areas, as well as the hydrophilic areas on the polypeptide chain. So the hydrophobic areas don't like water, so they get packed on the inside of um, the molecule. The hydrophilic areas do like water, so they can remain on the outside, so they can be in contact with water. So what does this really look like? Let's take a look at a diagram. Okay, so over here, this is the tertiary protein structure, and with all the different bonding, so you can see here's the alpha helix here, and it's just begin folding over on itself over and over again. And you can see over here, this is another example of the tertiary structure in a more colorful format to help you guys you see there's an alpha helix there. I think these are some pleated sheets here that are also joined in, okay? So let's move on to the final level of protein structure, quaternary structure. And how does this occur? Basically, it's quaternary structure is when two or more polypeptide chains come together to form this large protein. So if we go back to tertiary structure, that is just one polypeptide chain. Sorry, there's the number one. So when you bring two tertiary structures together, then they're gonna form a quaternary protein structure. And down here, you can see that hemoglobin is made up 
of um, at least two polypeptide chains due to the different colors. Okay, so let's take a quick look at that overall again quickly. So we've got primary structure here with the linear format of the polypeptide chain. Then we've got secondary structure where the alpha helix forms due to hydrogen bonding or the pleated sheet. And then we have our tertiary structure where the 3D shape takes place due to all kinds of different bonding such as covalent, ionic, and all the hydrophilic and hydrophobic uh, parts of the polypeptide chain move to one area. So remember, tertiary is still just one polypeptide chain. And when we move to a quaternary protein structure, then we're going to move down this tertiary and we're going to go grab another tertiary or another polypeptide chain from somewhere else and bring it in to form the quaternary protein structure. So let's review the main ideas. Proteins have many, many, many functions, jobs or roles based around protein structure and function. And the other important thing to remember is there are four levels of protein structure. So now that we've come to the end of this video lesson, can you list the major functions of proteins? Can you recognize an amino acid? Can you draw an amino acid and identify the amine and the acid carboxyl and R groups? Can you identify the peptide bonds in dipeptides and polypeptides? And can you differentiate or tell the difference among the primary, secondary, tertiary, and quaternary structure of proteins with respect to structure and types of bonding. Well, that's it for this lesson, and I hope that helps. Thank you.